Myth 2. Um, this is again from John Gray's Straw Dogs. Okay. Okay. There are many reasons for rejecting the idea of free will, some of them decisive. If our actions are caused, then we cannot act other, otherwise than we do. In that case, we cannot be responsible for them. We can be free agents only if we are authors of our acts, but we ourselves, we are ourselves products of chance and necessity. We cannot choose to be what we are born. In that case, we cannot be responsible for what we do. There are strong arguments against free will, but recent scientific research has weakened it even more. In Benjamin Lebet's work on the half-second delay, it has been shown that the electrical impulse that initiates action occurs half a second before we take the con conscious decision to act. We think ourselves as deliberating what to do, then doing it. In fact, in nearly the whole of our lives, our actions are initiated unconsciously. The brain makes us ready for action. Then we have the experience of acting. As Lebet and his colleagues put it, the brain evidently decides to initiate, or at the least prepare to initiate the act at a time before there is any reportable subjective awareness that such a decision has taken place. Cerebral initiation, even of a spontaneous voluntary act, can and usually does begin unconsciously. If we do not act in the way we think we do, the reason is partly to do with the bandwidth of consciousness, its ability to transmit information measured in terms of bits per second. This is much too narrow to be able to register the information we routinely receive and act on. As organisms active in the world, we process perhaps 14 million bits of information per second. The bandwidth of consciousness is around 18 bits. This means we have conscious access to about a millionth of the information we daily use to survive. The upshot of neuroscientific research is that we cannot be the author of our acts. The vet does retain a faint shadow of free will in his notion of the veto, the capacity veto, the capacity of consciousness to stall or abort an act that the brain has initiated. The trouble is that we can never know when or if we have exercised the veto. Our subjective experience is frequently, perhaps always, ambiguous. When we are on the point of acting, we cannot predict what we are about to do. Yet when we look back, we may see our decision as a step on a path on which we were already bound. We see our thoughts sometimes as events that happen to us, and sometimes as our acts. Our feeling of freedom comes about through switching between these two angles of vision. Free will is a trick of perspective. Free will is a trick of perspective.